Hi guys, today I want to do a review of the new Sennelier travel box of 8 10 milliliter, millimeter tubes and this is the box it comes in and it says French Rice watercolor honey based the lens rich color palette of impressionist and it comes in a set like this open up there is a palette it's removable you want to take it off it has a small brush size 3 and these are the tubes so there's um, Sennelier Yellow Light, Sennelier Red, Permanent Magenta, Phthalo Blue, Forest Green, Phthalo Green Light, Burn Sienna, and Ivory Black. And these are pretty small 10 millimeter tubes. He has all the information in the back, light, light fastness, pigment, and let's try them out. I'm gonna put little dibs of paint. Okay, so I'm just gonna speed up from here. I'm just putting a few samples of the paints on the palette to do color swatches after that and just to see how the color looks, the consistency. It was um, pretty nice, pretty uh, buttery and pasty, I would say, not too runny. So I laid out the names of the paints um, on a little watercolor paper, a little piece of watercolor paper. And I usually mark the transparency and light fastness. The only color that was not rated is Nellia Red. Did not have any rating for its uh, light fastness. But other than that, most of the colors are pretty transparent. I think only Ivory Black was the one that's opaque. And the colors look really nice and vibrant and this is actually uh, because of the honey that was used in, um, as a binder in the paint. Honey adds sort of this luminosity and radiance to the paint. But also another good thing about honey is that it also increases longevity of the paint. It's not gonna dry up and be almost unmanageable in a few years, like with something that happened to me with my Winter Newton, uh, their Cotman series. Those colors are pretty much so hard to use right now, but these I'm hoping are going to last a pretty long time. So the colors are vibrant, I really like the forest green, goes to almost dark black. And uh, Burnt Sienna has a nice warm shape, very transparent. And uh, the last one is Ivory Black. Again, not sure about this one, I don't know if I'm going to use this one. Um, just a very neutral color, it's probably going to be good for some inking packs or something like this. watercolors on my regular watercolor sketchbook by Strathmore and this is the sketchbook that I just started but um, 
I am intending to use for most of my watercolor sketches. So I just want to see how the color performs on a nicer quality watercolor paper. And I wanted to see how, also how well it blends. So I'm putting together yellow and red. And um, I'm just going to put a few dots of just clean water between them to see how they mix. And red is a much stronger pigment, so it usually overpowers the yellow. And it doesn't really create a nice orange in my experience. But I will see what happens. And um, I was interested in seeing how this magenta color is going to mix with the fairy blue eye. I was hoping for a nice green lilac color to happen between them. But magenta color is pretty granulating. But it was still nice shades happening in there. And I'm putting together some yellow and they look blue see the greens and I created a very nice vibrant green. So you see I'll run back to the red and try to push it back into the yellow but the red was kind of stubborn. It didn't want to mix. It just went into the yellow without mixing it. And then um, now I'm just testing the flow to see how well the pigment actually flows. But even from the previous test you can tell that it's moving pretty nicely. So I'm just adding more water to see how far this red thing is going to spread. And I was using one of my larger brushes because the one that I came in the set is just so thin. But um, I'm still going to give it a little test to see how that brush performs. And um, straight out of the, the packaging, the brush came to a nice point so I had very big expectations for it but honestly after the first use it just fanned out and it was harder to get it back to the fine point and not easy to manage and it also doesn't hold as much water but maybe I'll use it in something and it's also very tiny because it, this is a travel set so it's not really intended for a very kind of a fine waterfall work, but it's fine. Hi guys, we are back a few days later and I just really took some time to play around with these watercolors to get a better impression of how they work and how they mix and in general I, um, I did like them. I wasn't a big fan of this uh, permanent magenta color. It just creates a really muddy mixes with other colors, but with the small amounts, it was still really pretty nice. The thing I like about these colors is that for the most part, they have only one pigment and they'll be listed on the back. You can see, where is it? Right there. They have only one pigment except for the greens. This forest green has three pigments. Oh, can you see that? Where is it? There. This has three pigments and this phthalo green light has two pigments. But, well, they still uh, mix pretty nicely, but you get much more predictable and nicer colors when you have only one pigment in a tube. So, I'll show you. There's one test piece that I did with these colors, and I was really going for the subtle but still vibrant colors and I think these watercolors did pretty nicely with, with the variety of the neutral tones you can get with them and today I'm just gonna do uh, another demo so you can see better how these colors are mixing together and I'm using the Strathmore watercolor sketchbook it's 140 pounds 
And another thing we're gonna test today is how well these colors can be re-wet. This panel over here, mixing palette, is a few days old. So we're just gonna do some test. Picking up some water. And okay, let's see. This is nice. You see right away this is picking up much better color. Let me zoom in. this magenta color. Yep. Very nicely you get a nice clean color. Okay, that's a good sign. So I'm gonna do a floral illustration today because I'm working on some ideas for Mother's Day cards. And I'm gonna do a wreath. I will sketch it out first with just a yellow Prismacolor color erase pencil. And I like these ones because they really do erase nicely. And I'm only gonna use it to sketch the just the general outline. where I want things to go, kind of. but we will see how it looks in color. And for small details, I'm using silver white round, size 4. For larger details, I'm going to use Princeton, size 10. And I also have a few smaller brushes. One is by Winsor Newton Cotton Materials, size 3, and one is Silver Ruby Satin, size 00. These are nice brushes to have. Not sure if I'm going to need them today, but we'll see how it goes. Space. So I use just a regular ceramic plate. Just to have more space for mixing colors. Because I think this palette is nice for... This palette is nice for travel. But practically speaking, this is not enough for mixing colors. As you can see, colors are very nice. And vibrant. And right now I'm using a combination of the Phalo Light Green and Forest Green. And these two mix nicely together.
you can also get a little bit more of phthalo blue inside here. Now I'll pick up more of the sap green to have a nicer darker green mixture. This one, yeah, this looks really nice. To add some shading to the color. I mean to the leaves. I'm using just regular tap water. I'm not using any flow mediums. Just to see how the colors perform on their own. some flowers and I'll pick up my larger brush I'm using their Snow Your Red and I'm gonna mix in a little bit of yellow a very nice warm orange and to be honest I don't like how watercolor mixed orange looks I sort of prefer to have it straight from the tube I feel like it's it's always much more vibrant just working with what we have here. For another flower I want to use just pure yellow. In some areas, paint is not completely dry, so it mixes in and creates more subtle shadows. And from the inside, This one, I'm just trying to recreate that. Um, I don't remember the exact name of that rose, garden rose, that is very thick.
And the other one I'm gonna experiment and I will use some of this magenta color. I'm just gonna see, oh no, I think I'm gonna add some red to it. Just, this color doesn't even work for me, I don't know why. So I'm adding some more red to this mixture to make it at least a little more warmer and more manageable. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna use the same mixture on this side just for some interesting floral elements. And I'm still using my size 10 brush. it comes to a really good point where I'm able to create a variety of shapes just added some random flowers in there okay I think I can go back to my purple rose flowers to this. Just really like how it looks right now. Let's pick up some more green.
that's fine. So really nice greens, definitely. Um, really nice yellow. It makes it good with greens. So I'm still not a big fan of the magenta flower, but I think I can use it for some flowers, some cases. And pretty surprised with orange because they're Sennelia red and their um, Sennelia yellow light are quite vibrant both and the red is a warm color so it makes a nice orange and all in all nice set so I hope you enjoyed this video give it a like and um, subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos there's more to come I'll see you in my next video bye